The teenage years are often marked by a relentless pursuit of thrills and excitement, as young individuals seek to push the boundaries and find adventure in unconventional places. However, this hunger for exhilaration can sometimes lead them down a wrong path, resulting in devastating outcomes. On a solemn night in February 2016, Canada Olympic Park in Calgary became the backdrop for an unimaginable tragedy when eight teenagers snuck into the complex, resulting in the untimely deaths of twin brothers Jordan and Evan Caldwell. So what happened to the brothers and their friends? This is the Calgary bobsled disaster. Jordan and Evan Caldwell were born on the 21st of December 1998 to parents Jason and Shauna Caldwell in Calgary, Canada. Both of the two grew up in Calgary and were described as being well liked by their peers, intellectual and mischievous. Their father said they were thoughtful young men with broad interests who weren't afraid to challenge conventional wisdom and enjoyed dissecting the challenges of our world today. The two enjoyed deep serious topics such as politics and religion but also enjoyed pulling pranks on each other and their friends, but always with love. Evan and Jordan Caldwell, in addition to their vibrant personalities, were exemplary students, known for their humility and dedication to both their academic pursuits and community involvement. Both twins excelled academically, achieving straight A grades while also actively participating in school and church activities. Jordan, as the student council president at Westmount Charter High School, demonstrated exceptional leadership qualities while Evan, having recently transferred to Ernest Manning High School, had ambitions of pursuing engineering at Queen's University. The two brothers had their whole world at their fingertips until tragedy struck at the Canada Olympic Park in February of 2016. The Canada Olympic Park is a versatile sports facility located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Originally constructed for the 1988 Winter Olympics held in Calgary, it has since evolved into a highly popular destination for both recreational and competitive sports. Nestled in the stunning landscape, the Canada Olympic Park offers a range of world-class facilities and attractions. It is mostly renowned for its winter sport offerings, encompassing thrilling activities like ski jumping and bobsleighing. With ski hills and slopes catering to various skill levels, skiing and snowboarding enthusiasts flock to the park to enjoy their favourite winter pursuits. Beyond winter sports, the park boasts an array of exciting activities. Visitors can indulge in exhilarating mountain biking, experience the thrill of zip lining, or even embark on summer bobsleighing adventures. The park also features a state-of-the-art training facility for high-performance athletes, alongside diverse training programs and camps designed to cater to individuals of all ages and levels. As a hub for sports and recreation, the Canada Olympic Park hosts numerous events and competitions throughout the year, further solidifying its significance. It continues to stand as a proud legacy of the 1988 Winter Olympics, holding a prominent place in Calgary's vibrant sports culture. Although they have had incidents in the past, nothing will compare to what happened on that fateful day. A week prior to the incident, Evan Caldwell and his two other friends snuck onto the bobsled track after hours and used toboggans and a kayak to slide down the track. The trio were equipped with helmets and torches and managed to go down the bobsled track three times unnoticed. Daniel Spaulding, who was a part of the group of three, said because the first time went so smoothly, they decided to go back the week after and bring friends from their church group in high school with them as well. He said, We just kind of told them about it. There was not a whole lot we thought could go wrong. Yeah, just bring your sled and have fun. So that's exactly what they did. And on the 5th of February, 2016, the eight teenagers returned to Olympic Park and climbed over a fence ready to go down the track. Gathering at the hilltop on the night of February the 5th, 2016, the group of eight teenagers prepared for their night. They each climbed the confines of the perimeter fence and made their way towards the track's platform. They then got ready to go down. In the first sled, Caleb Hettinger occupied the front seat, with Mark Lyons in the middle and Evan Caldwell in the back. The second sled consisted of Daniel Spaulding at the front, Wilson Skultz in the middle, and his younger brother Eric Skultz at the back. Lastly, Jordan Caldwell assumed the front position of the third sled, while David Carr took the back seat. Unbeknownst to the group of teenagers, 
the staff at the Olympic Park had taken precautions by stringing a barrier across the juncture where the bobsled and luge tracks converged, in anticipation of upcoming training sessions during the weekend. One by one, the group smashed into the barrier. Caleb Hettinger, one of the teenagers, said, I remember flying around the corner and seeing something and then I blacked out. Hettinger was seriously injured. He woke up a few minutes after the crash, but he was unable to speak or see. He said, I thought I was dead for sure. I thought I was going to bleed out and die. I was starting to struggle to breathe because stuff was lodged in the back of my throat. Hettinger, who was in the sled with Mark Lyons and Evan Caldwell, said Lyons was also seriously injured from the collision, suffering from wounds to his head. Tragically, unbeknownst to those two, Evan had been internally decapitated and lay dead inches from them. The second sled consisting of the Skultz brothers and Daniel Spaulding was the least affected by the crash. Spaulding broke his ankle and the other two were surprisingly okay. The third sled consisting of Jordan Caldwell and David Carr, however, was not so lucky. Much like the members of the first car, David was seriously injured and Jordan Caldwell was killed on impact. Daniel Spaulding called the police and the boys waited for their rescue. Amidst the chaos and uncertainty, an extraordinary display of resilience and faith emerged from the group of teenagers involved. As they lay injured on the floor waiting for emergency services to arrive, reports surfaced of the teenagers joining together in a powerful act of unity, singing songs about worship and praise. Once emergency service arrived at the scene, the focus shifted to providing immediate medical attention to the injured individuals. The responders worked tirelessly to stabilize the victims and transport them to nearby hospitals for further medical care. Sadly, the Caldwell brothers were pronounced dead on the scene. The bobsled crash at Canada Olympic Park had harrowing consequences, including a devastating eye injury suffered by 17-year-old Kayla Pettinger. The forceful impact of the collision resulted in the loss of his eye, forever altering his life. Many were not sure if he was going to make it, but after 10 hours of surgery, Caleb survived and was then on the road to recovery. It was feared that David Carr had brain damage, but luckily he did not and fully recovered. The injuries to the other boys ranged from broken bones and internal trauma to severe head and spinal injuries, but all of them survived. The survivors faced a long road to recovery, requiring extensive medical treatments and ongoing support to cope with the lasting effects of the tragic incident as many of the boys were traumatized. A few weeks after the crash, the police released a statement saying no one would be charged for the deaths. In the inquiry, Judge Margaret Keelagan said, the young men involved in this incident were thrill-seeking youth whose ill-conceived risk-taking resulted in an unspeakable tragedy. It is important, however, to remembering that the two promising young men who passed away were bright, talented members of their community, loved by their family and their friends, who did not involve themselves with drugs or alcohol, and how, before the incident occurred, had spent the evening at their church youth group. In the inquiry, the Windsport company who owned Calgary Olympic Park were urged to improve safety and security, which they gracefully accepted. The parents of the boys made it clear that they don't blame anyone and don't want to be compensated. They released a statement saying, we extend our gratitude to all involved in the inquiry process that the proceedings did not become contentious. Nothing can compensate for the loss of our sons, but we feel that the planned and future protections being implemented by Windsport are fitting and appropriate. The funeral held in Calgary for the Caldwell twins, Jordan and Evan, who tragically lost their lives, was a heartfelt and emotional event. The service was attended by a large gathering of mourners who came to pay their respects and offer support to the grieving family. At the funeral, the church pastor said, today we weep together for all our lives have been profoundly impacted. But out of such a tragedy, may we find hope because of the lives and principles and the values that marked Evan and Jordan's lives. Their lives must be never defined by how they died, but rather by how they lived. The incident serves as a painful reminder of the dangers that lurk when seeking thrills in prohibited and unsafe environments. The aftermath of the incident left a lasting impact on the affected individuals, their families, and the entire community, highlighting the importance of safety precautions and responsible decision-making in the pursuit of excitement. By all reports, these two were good kids who made a mistake, which tragically led to their deaths. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.